Hi everyone, I am Sanya Kule. This is little Yangshi, and that's cute little me. And that's cute little me as well. Oh, hi little me. And in this video, we'll be talking about another platform for doing functional gene enrichment analysis which is called using G-Profiler. So G-Profiler is actually a very, very helpful tool. Um, you know, it does gene functional enrichment analysis or over-representation analysis um, on an input gene list. So it maps genes to known functional information sources and detects statistically significant enriched terms. So there are lots of biological sources. So it looks at um, data from ensemble databases, fungi, plants, metazoa, specific versions of the ensemble genomes. Um, it looks about gene ontology, pathways from CAG, reactome, wiki pathways, miRNA targets from mi base, and regulatory motive matches from TransPAC, tissue specificity from human protein atlas, protein complexes from the quorum, and human disease phenotypes from human phenotype ontology. There are so many databases out here that we're going to look at in this video. So um, please watch and I will show you how we can use this site to get some gene enrichment analysis information and insights. And again, please let me know if you have any questions at all. And so this is the site, this is G Profiler. So um, let me just write the link for you guys too. Um, and I also have the link in the bio, but it is biit.cs.ut.ee slash g profiler slash g o s t. So this is what this is over here. Okay, so that's the link and this is G Profiler and whatever it, it can do, I sort of mentioned it over here. It, it sort of mentions what it's able to do. It's able to look for all these different, um, you know, uh, organisms as well. So this along with Metascape is a great resource for gene enrichment analysis, especially if you um, want some insights with little to, um, to no programming involved as well. You can just input some gene lists and get these insights. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. I'm going to show you how you can um, input gene lists and get these sort of insights from G Profiler. And I have another video where I talk about another resource like Metascape, where you can also get gene set enrichment analysis information as well. And it looks like from G Profiler, you can get um, gene ID conversion, autology search, SNP ID to gene name as, as well. So there's a lot going on. So what you'll also see here is that they also give you a random example. So uh, constructed by randomly picking 50% of the query symbols over all Go terms. So this is just like something that will give you some statistically significant result here because that sort of what we're looking for here, statistical significant enrichments. So these are like ensemble IDs. And then you might wonder, okay, in this example, well, what are ensemble IDs? Well, if you look at any gene, like the APP gene, now what you'll see here is that you can look in gene cards and then you can find out that each gene has some HG um, and C symbol and entree ID, which I'm a huge fan of, and an ensemble number as well. So there are a lot of different ways to, and even they have many different symbols for them too, and uh, many aliases potentially. So we can just run it with this, and these are also gene named in ensemble form. So these are ensemble gene IDs. So then you can also run this demo, which is what you'll see right off the bat as an example. And um, okay, so let's see. So you'll get some capped and print, and you'll see that this is um, gene ontology molecular function. 
So um, this is gene ontology, biology, processes, and cellular components. So basically under um, gene ontology, we have one, we have molecular functions. We have two, which is biological processes. And three, we have cellular components. So this is like sort of how you can interpret the gene ontology. And that's what we see here. We also have CAG, we have REACT, we have Wiki Pathways as well. We have this TF. Um, and, and when you select them, you can sort of see, um, you know, results. You can click on these and they sort of will, you know, show you, okay, this is this, this is this. These are the negative log and P adjusted value. And then this is sort of telling you from this random result, how many of the results are from, from these. So if you look at detailed results here, we can kind of see, okay, uh, these are the molecular functions. So these are the 11 that we had here, 11. We should expect six for biological processes. So one, two, three, four, five, six here. For cellular components, we should only expect one, which is transverse complex um, as well. So you can see that these are all the enrichments. And this sort of tells you here, if you go along here, it kind of tells you um, in this list which genes um, are significant. So this is using KEG databases, Kyoto and Cyclopedia um, of genes or so. This will tell you the significant ones statistically, and you can see which genes um, that are in black are significant for this enrichment that are, act so which genes from um, here ensemble gene IDs are actually involved in this enrichment. And this is React, and this is Wiki pathways. And you can see that when we ran this, it was just as of now for homo sapiens, which are human beings. So this is just, you know, you can also download the results here to a CSV. And if you download them, you'll also see, you know, it has this source. So this is gene ontology molecular function. So this is like gene ontology. And then this is biological process. Ah. Oh, that's AI trying to fill out the rest. And this is like React. And then this is like Wiki Pathways. And if there's some databases that are not significant in this list, then we don't use those at all. So we can see intersection size, so how much overlap there is, effective domain size as well, like how many genes would be in this out of the, you know, to be considered as well. So you could see that for for instance, for Go Biological Process, they're about 18,123. Then for Go Molecular Functions, there is another. So this value is for Go Molecular Functions. Um, there is about, the domain size is about 18,679. For cellular components, this value is instead, um, this value here. For KEG, it is a little bit um, different here. It is. Um, 8,000, so 8,000 domain size. And you can see that for any different source, so the source and the domain size, you know, the source is to the domain size. And then the intersection size sort of looks at like kind of how many genes were or IDs were found in common. And then this is the term and this is the ID so that if you look up this term online, you're going to find um, this term name. So each term name has an ID. Adjusted p-value, negative log 10 of adjusted p-value. This is often what is plotted. So you can just put in any list of genes and you'll find those enrichments and you can download them as well. So that's an example.
from their random demo. But now let's say that I have a list. And how would I input that and get the results and then do that analysis? It's the same thing, but I just sort of want to show you some other varieties as well. And uh, another key thing that you can do um, before I do that is you can also see advanced as well. You can definitely um, change some of these parameters around. And if you want to also download these data sources, you could download them. These um, is going to allow you to download all of these files as .gmt files, which I'll show you in other videos how you can use those GMT files for other analysis if you're doing programming or if you just want to see what is involved in these gene lists, then you can download these gene lists directly to do analysis on those. And then you can use programming packages or other tools to open them. Now I'm going to walk you through an example, um, which is similar to the Metascape example I had given. So let's say that you have a list of 34 different genes. How will you perform enrichment analysis for those using gene profiler? So I'm going to show you two possibilities for this list. The first one is just you have like the gene um, names here. So let me show you. You can just have like these gene names for these list of 34 genes here. Or what you could also do is you could have the gene and the associated entree IDs. So I want to show you guys how essentially G Profiler is a very, very good tool to help you do this gene set enrichment analysis as well. Okay. So now let's just take it this example here. So we can just select all these genes here. We can select these genes here and then what we can do is Oh yeah, I just select copy and, and these. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put these here in G profiler. So a uh, separated list of genes. Then I'm going to run the query. <coughs> okay, great. So it's come up with some enrichment analysis results for us. So all you have to do is just upload the list of gene names and it will come up with the results like molecular function, biologic, there were none here. There was zero that I have found. There were six biological processes like leukocyte activation, leukocyte proliferation, um, you know, cellular components, CAG, REACT, wiki pathways, TF, the so development of pulmonary dendritic cells and macrophage subsets. Um, there's nothing here. So if there's nothing in parentheses, that means that it searched all these different enrichments and it couldn't find it like for molecular function, human phenotype, um, miRNA, quorum, um, it, it couldn't find those. So we can just see the detailed results here. And instead of ensemble IDs, if we zoom in, we can see that these are actually the gene names in the list that we had given. So if we recall the gene list we had given was um, like odd gray, like all of these here are uh, like the same, you know, all of these ones here. So what we can see here is that it's telling you which genes are involved here. Um, and it's kind of like a, a, a way for us to figure out. And it also tells you the ensemble ID as well and the adjusted p-value. Um, and then you could sort of, um, do some additional filters as well. So yeah, the least are just some analysis that you can do here and you can just download this as well. If you click on PNG, then what you're going to have is you may have like these photos that will pop up as well. So you'll have a photo, a screenshot of all of these results if you click the PNG. So that's a great way, especially if you just want to, at a glance, 
have these insights on um, what processes. So we can see that those list of 34 genes involved in the immune system, development of pulmonary dendritic cells and macrophages, um, secretory um, granule membrane, tertiary granule, hematopoietic cell lineage, pertussis, immune system process, leukocyte activation, cell activation, immune response, immune effector um, process, leukocyte proliferation. So there's just a lot of those that are out there. Um, now, so we looked up gene names as well. So I also want to show you what happens if you do entree IDs. Um, so these are the gene IDs for each of these corresponding genes. So like for instance, before I do that, I just show you that CSF3R. If we look up this gene here, what will we find? So we're going to find that um, here, this gene ID is 1441, which is um, exactly what I have in my mapping file as well. When I have the entree IDs for CF, CSFBR, it's 1441, which is exactly what um, this is over here. So if we try to query instead using these um, entree IDs, which are just the gene IDs, then we can just try rerunning this query with these numbers. And it's going to give you the same results. Um, so if you don't believe me, let's just um, as well kind of go back here and see, okay, that there's nothing here. Oh, it's MD query. Let me paste it and run it. Um, and you can see it's like the same things as, as well. Um, Same reaction, same results here. So it doesn't matter um, really like what you end up choosing. Um, I think it gives you the similar results. So I'll just show you, um, um, you know, this is when we were using the gene um, names here. You can see these results with the gene names, the gene names going across. So whatever you put it in, it's going to tell you like where that is found um, on the list. So that's what these results will tell you here. Okay, so I also just kind of want to show you another example. So I have this um, entry ID file uh, me, and I want to show, sort of show you what happens if you take like another gene list for argument's sake. Like kind of you might, might want to see, well, okay, this is sort of this gene list, but like let's just choose another gene list and just see like how the results can change based on the gene list that you input. So um, this is like from my, uh, um, my mapping file. So we just, let's just try to maybe just sort these randomly um, by smallest to largest or something. And then, hmm. Let's just select some random. Actually, let's just go back and then just select some random ones. Let's select maybe these snore proteins here and the snore genes. Let's, uh, let's just have some, let's get creative and maybe also just select these, whatever this list of genes is. You can tell it's like a fairly comprehensive list of genes here. And maybe you can also get some of these just for some variety. Okay. Now I have this uh, list of maybe, like now I'm gonna make it a much wider list of like 500 genes. Um, and okay, so I can use either, or I could use the um, gene ID, do I could use this, or I could, you know. So let's just try this approach here. These are some gene names. And we want to just see what enrichment results look like for this list of 560 genes. I want to show you that this has capabilities as well of running this list. Let's say that this is a module that you get from some co-expression network or just some really giant list. So what you can then do is you're going to have some issue where it's going to say, um, well, we have this information, this information, this information for this ID. So it might give you this sometimes for each of these genes. They can have different ensemble IDs. 
So then you can just um, choose this. This is what I go with. Unless you want something more detailed, you can just select the ensemble ID. So genes can sometimes map to multiple ensemble IDs. So it's sort of asking you here because we have like so many genes. So the, po the possibility of having this come up is has increased. So you can just click select the ensemble ID with the most gene ontology annotations. And so this one gives you more, 308, this gives you five, this ensemble. So we're selecting this one, this one, this one. Um, it just selects the first one of the all the same. The ones that have zero, it sort of just ignores and it's just rerunning the query, trying to figure out what ensemble IDs you'd want. So once we finish running, okay, Okay. You can also permanently ignore them and then run. Okay. So based on the results for this info, so for ambiguous ones, it, it sort of got rid of those. And now they're just 276 that were there. So it says some query IDs were not recognized. So, Let's also kind of show, so we use the gene names here. So now, so now you see here that based on the gene names, what we have is we have these detailed results. And there are a lot of them here. So you can see that, um, you know, we have so many results here. We also have like catabolic process, metabolic process, all of these synaptic vesicle cycle, membrane, lipid, catabolic process. We have like so many um, annotations that have come up actually. So, because um, we put cuprous ion binding, general transcription initiation factor activity, all of these. And then as we're going along, it's sort of telling you, oh yeah, there are quite a lot that aren't involved in these. Um, so this is only for the enriched terms, those that have quite a few that are involved in um, so you can see these counts here. So you see all these for the um, gene ontology, biological processes, there's so many. Regulation of neurotransmitter secretion. Um, and then there's some here that are also involved. Then um, even for cellular components, for CAG pathways as well, for REACT, RNA polymerase 3 transcription, um, RNA polymerase 3 transcription initiation. So there are quite a lot of these. And we can also, um, again, we can save the PNG here. This is a snapshot um, of it. We can also have the CSV. So yeah, now when we open up the CSV, what we'll get is we'll get um, this information and G Profiler is so great in that when it downloads it, it sort of tells you the time that you downloaded it as well. And you can see molecular functions and all these terms, um, the IDs, adjusted p-value here, negative log 10 of adjusted p-value. So that's just, um, so basically the way to interpret that is, um, let me just actually, um, Map the text here. Okay, so this is just um, equals to negative one times log n of this. So so you should just see that um, this is this value, um, the negative times negative one. And then you take, then you, so basically you take the logarithm of this value, the log base 10, and then you just multiply that by negative one and you get this. They just gave us this additional column just for our reference because that's what they use to do, to do the plotting. You know, so if you see that here, you'll see that the plotting that they do is the, the P value, then the bars are shown for negative log 10 P adjusted value, just because these values can be on such a varying scale here that when you essentially put these on a negative log 10 p-value scale, you get rid of such a, um, a wide range, actually. So I'm going to allow that. So, so again, this is, now you can sort of have an idea for um, 
how broad these results. So you can download this entire PNG of all the enrichments for um, the list of genes that you've given it. It's going to download all of this. It's an image uh, for your reference. So you can totally save everything you've gotten from this site. So again, you can see that while you can have 10 to the negative 12 and this, this is like a, like a, a, a factor of 10 to the negative, uh, of 10 to the six difference. So that's like a million difference between them. So we use these log 10 transforms. So we can sort of scrunch that huge scale down to something meaningful that we can plot because the difference between this and this, it is like quite a lot. So if I do, like if I see what, what, what is this divided by this, you're gonna have a pretty huge number. Yeah, that scale is huge. That's why they use negative log 10 transforms. And here you can also have the snapshot of what genes are involved in this. And what is the intersection size? So this intersection size is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that means that six genes in our 559 genes or so, they were found to be involved in Swingle myelin phosphodiesterase activity. So it's like a little tongue twister. Snare binding, it sounds like a sneak. So uh, you can see here that seven were found here. And the term size typically refers to the number of the genes that are in this set. So let's actually check out like what, what this is. So this has a gene ID, snare binding. So now I don't know what snare binding is, but it could, we can check it out and see. Ah, okay, I think it got confused. So let's just try that again. Um, snare binding. Okay, this is the same one. So you see like here, the 119 genes, 248 annotations. So this is for the mouse genome. So, Yeah, so what we saw is for the mouse genome. So it's roughly similar. There are some differences, but this is like 119 genes. Um, but if we checked out the human, which is what we were doing, then we see that it's about 113 genes here and um, seven overlaps there um, from our original list here. So that's just sort of like how they're calculating and doing the annotations and you can store this here. So this is the same thing as, as this here. And um, you have the term size. Um, then we have the intersection size as well. So that's just an example of different functions for different um, like gene sets, but how you can get gene enrichment results. And then you can interpret it that this family of genes seems to be involved in these various processes, you know, like synaptic vesicles and whatnot. So you see like one list of genes versus the other. So I'll just give you a comparison point that, you know, this is the recent one that we were looking at here. And we also had one from like, that was random from before. Like there's so many genes here that you have to scroll in to sort of see them, but you can sort of see that they have like synaptic vesicle, nu nucleoplasm, ex exocytic vesicle, um, all of these histone modifications, you know, on, you know, they're the proteins. Um, that make up those um, nucleosomes that DNA is, is wrapped around and modifications to their tail can really change our gene expression, fluctuations in consciousness. Oh, that's interesting. And maybe let's see what genes are involved. Okay, SNCA. Oh, this one is also associated, I think, with either autism or Parkinson. That's a key one. Um, and then you can also see, oh, okay, this is a very um, key gene. Um, so you can need scanning along here, maybe um, let's see if we zoom out. Okay, now this one all the way at the end. Okay. So there's also that C3 or um, 60. Okay. 
that's one example. And then, so that's what we also saw. And then the other example we had seen before was just for those list of like 34 genes, which were involved in immune system process, cell activation, leukocyte proliferation, tertiary granule, hemopoietic cell lineage, pertussis, immune system, all of these things. So we basically saw that there are different reactions, um, different biological processes based on the gene lists that you input. And that's sort of why you want to do gene module enrichment analysis. Like what are those genes significantly doing? I have a list of genes and each gene can have a set of processes that we could research. You know, what has this gene been known for? But if we use um, gene enrichment analysis overall, we see that, hey, we have this list of genes. We got it from some differential gene expression analysis, some gene um, module. So any list, maybe from some experiment that I was running, I found that these genes look just somehow in the lab, they look very interesting. What do they do? Whatever the analysis is, this can do some functional annotation and give you some ideas. And then we can conduct more experiments as well to see if that's indeed the case. So yeah, basically what I showed you guys is how we can do um, gene module enrichment analysis using G-Profiler. So I really hope that this is helpful for you guys and then you can use these tools to better understand what your list of genes are doing. So there are many tools out there like G-Profiler, which I just showed you, and you can take the data sources as needed. You can also do Metascape, and there's so many tools that I'm going to talk to you guys about. So please stay tight. And Mr. Major, it's a lot of love and best wishes to you guys on your journey. From little me, hi me, and from little Yankee, says hi. Uh, and if you found our video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and please reach out to let us know if you have any questions at all. It's cute little me. And I'm Sanya Kuller and thank you again for watching.